be joined by Jeremy Rashford in the next of our Mortal Kombat uh, franchise uh, documentary. Jeremy played the uh, character Smoke in the Mortal Kombat animated series Mortal Kombat uh, Defenders of Earth. That's my reminder of the show. Jeremy, if I can start off by asking uh, you, how did the opportunity come about for you to voice over the character Smoke in Mortal Kombat? Uh, it's kind of like a, a weird part to this story. Uh, I was originally up for one of the, the main characters. I can't remember. This is going back a few years now, my friend. I think it was 1996. Uh, and on the first day of recording... Uh, I woke up that morning and I had an allergic reaction to something. Uh, I went into anaphylactic kind of, I started breaking out in hives and my windpipe was closing up and I was just new to Los Angeles. This was sort of like the first gig, a uh, voiceover gig, you know, for a, a cartoon. So I rushed myself to the hospital uh, and this was pre cell phones uh, I think I had a pager, but I didn't have it with me. It was very early in the morning that I got to the hospital and I was there until four and they had tried to call me that morning saying there'd been a change. I was no longer going to be one of the lead cast. They had gone on another route with it. So they were trying to find me and I was in the hospital again, pre-cell phone with no way of communicating with them. I was out. They had me on antihistamines hooked up to all sorts of stuff. Um, when I finally got out and got a hold of my voice agents, they told me that they'd been looking for me and that the gig hadn't gone my way kind of thing. And then a few weeks later, they called me up and uh, uh, offered me the role of Smoke, uh, which was one episode. Um, and uh, again, brother, this is, uh, this is quite some time ago. Um, I don't think I've even seen the episode. Uh, and to, to answer the question about what, what uh, I've had this voice uh, for a very long time. Uh, when I used to answer the phone as a child, people thought I was, you know, my dad or uh, something like that. So when it came to just voicing smoke, they just said, just use your normal voice. <laughs> and then Jeremy, in terms of the, you mentioned you went for the, one of the original uh, cast members uh, in Defenders of uh, Earthrealm, as uh, Mark on the Defenders of Earthrealm. Uh, in terms of uh, research or your agent getting involved, what did you know about the sort of project? Was it was the agent said, listen, we've got this animated um, voice character we want you to try out for in this new sort of cartoon, sort of TV series? You mentioned was one of your first gigs. In terms of uh, Mortal Kombat, did you know anything about Mortal Kombat when you went to, uh, obviously, the audition, obviously, you got it uh, sick uh, before the audition, but in terms of research, or did you know anything about Mortal Kombat? Uh, I didn't, like, other than I, I, I had heard of it. Uh, I knew it was, you know, uh, some form of video game uh, fighting, uh, that, that kind of thing. Um, but in terms of... Uh, uh, going after the role like i was the voice of bananas gorilla in the the adventures of richard scary uh i auditioned for um a couple of uh, uh the marvel things and i knew the marvel universe there is a misnomer out there i played banshee in a live action fox movie of the week back in 95 right around this time but i didn't voice banshee on the cartoon um uh, but it's been written that I did and I didn't. Um, but that's the voiceover world. You just get calls. Uh, it, uh, but mine is usually, um, you know, 40 to 60, uh, uh, raspy, uh, that kind of, I've, um, so you just get that call uh, and go in and, and, and do as you're directed, I guess. And I suppose uh, Jeremy Lord Mercer him uh, on his soul. Uh, Luke Perry was the, the who played Sub Zero was the uh, formerly an actor in Beverly Hills nine oh two one oh was the character that voiced the uh, character Sub Zero who was your main sort of um, 
al- ally come for in that episode of uh, Mortal Kombat. In terms of that voiceover uh, session that you had there, did you do many sort? Did you do many sort of sessions with Luke Perry for that sort of episode, or were you brought in at different times, or did you come across each other at all? Uh, it's funny you say that now because um, uh, <coughs> I do remember it was quite a star-studded. Um, room everyone there seemed to be a star on their own show or in a show um and yeah i was opposite luke perry uh that was the first time i'd met him but i only did the one episode um but it's funny now that i think of it um our kids were at uh public school together so i bumped into him a couple times uh at school but i it, it, and again it had been a while, you don't just go, hey, we did the, I, I didn't even remember that we'd done it really. Um, again, this is 1996. That's, it's frightening how far away that is now. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Jeremy, uh, you mentioned that and in terms of a uh, uh, voiceover for a cartoon sort of animated series, uh, you've been in uh, a good few of those projects and you mentioned there sometimes about uh, getting a character and seeing the script and sort of lines. It's, do you sort of envision what the character might look at in your head, or do you see drawings of the character before you step into a room for a voiceover? And does that give you an idea or a portrayal, or do you ever actually see what the character, the animated character, might even look like? Yeah, many times uh, you'll get the script, you'll get a picture of uh, the cartoon person that you're going to be playing. Um, and... I always like it when they're kind of uh, human animals. Like uh, I, I play a lot of rhinoceroses uh, and crocodiles, <laughs> but in different forms. Um, but you'll get a picture of them. You'll get uh, like a paragraph usually of what they're about. Uh, and I've auditioned for many uh, of the new uh, video games and, and comic books and stuff or cartoon stuff. Um, yeah, you get a history, you get a breakdown, you get a picture, sometimes you can get a colored picture of it. Most of the time it's just black and white kind of drawn, but you get an, a vision in your head of what, what the character is going to be. And then you just work out what you want to do from there. Yeah, I suppose, uh, Jeremy, the Mortal Kombat uh, franchise, I suppose, is one of the most successful uh, video games of, of all time, uh, both globally, all over the world. Uh, the recent Mortal Kombat X game, I think it's over... 50 billion copies or something that's been sold all over the world in terms of from Brazil to Argentina, France, Germany, England, Ireland, the US. So it's a worldwide uh, sort of phenomenon. It had two movies in 1995 and 1997. And then it had uh, Legacy and Conquest series. And uh, obviously there's a new movie in the pipeline now for uh, 2021. So Mortal Kombat is sort of one of those franchises that if you're involved in it or any sort of association, because it's such a big, massive fan base, you sort of, people sort of, sort of, it's Illumina, you sort of get associated. Do so you obviously voice the character of Smoke? I know it's for one episode, but you're probably one of probably two or three characters that have voiced that sort of episode. So when people go and look for that uh, sort of definity on the character Smoke, uh, your sort of name uh, pops up beside him. And is that something you're sort of proud of? Uh, sure. Um, I, I, I don't know that I've ever been, uh, uh, recognized other than like, I, when I got the call that you wanted to do this interview, I wanted to, I want to say, Oh, good Lord. Why? Cause, uh, uh, it was, it was just one episode. It was not, um, uh, to me, the global phenomenon that you describe and that now that I hear you said, yeah, it's 25 years running that this thing is still going and it's got, Video game, movies, cartoons, it's got, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the, uh, as strong as the, the Ninja Turtles or the Smurfs, it seems, when it comes to its global, um, uh, uh, global acceptance. Yeah. It, I didn't really look at it that way. Yeah. I suppose, Jeremy, you mentioned that, uh, global acceptance. And I suppose in terms of, uh, a fighting sort of game, I suppose, to spread the boundaries where other sort of fighting games, video consoles like Tekken or Street Fighter, they fail to make that in, in adaptation into movies. Uh, but Mortal Kombat has such a vast array of support. 
characters, with backstories and storylines that obviously the appetite after the successful game is for a new movie that's coming out in uh, 2021. I don't know if you've seen the trailers for the new movie, but um, in terms of that, it seems to it's got a mass sort of a appeal. And I suppose in projects like that, even though you are an animated uh, story, and you you vast uh, Hollywood experience and vast uh, projects you've been in it. Uh, things with a array and array of uh, material. Obviously, it means for a director or producer, it's gold because there's so many avenues you can go down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> to, to to hook into one of those um, phenomena or the franchise, uh, uh, it's it's a. Um, that's a dream for a lot of people that uh, can really shore up uh, uh, the actor's life existence and uh, um, meeting uh, uh, the, the pensioner needs uh, when, when you, when you, when you, when you retire. <laughs> and, and I suppose uh, Jeremy with the new movie, uh, there's going to be, obviously there's, there's words in the talk that there's going to be a few sort of cameo sort of roles and, uh, not actors uh, playing the characters, but maybe sort of bit part roles. So it's a cameo, obviously you are associated, I know it's a cartoon animated series, but it's probably going to be one of the big blockbuster movies of January 2021. If a cameo role uh, came about, uh, would that be something uh, if the producers were looking on that Jeremy Ratchford would be interested in? Oh, most definitely. You want me on that puppy? I'll be on that puppy, baby. Yeah, uh, I'll... I'll, uh, I, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I can't remember smoke enough, but uh, I might be, uh, I always say, uh, my, my kids say I look like Wolverine's uncle now. Uh, maybe I could be Smoke's uh, retired uncle. <laughs> and I suppose, uh, Jeremy, in terms of uh, voiceover uh, gigs and voiceover, have you ever done anything similar to that since? Uh, you mentioned you've been in other sort of animated fight, but in terms of that fantasy sort of sci-fi, uh, good versus evil, uh, sort of bad, uh, I suppose mortal mortals versus supernatural sort of thing that is Mortal Kombat. You've done many voice. Have you done anything similar to that in terms of your voice over career since? Uh, not not in the last while. Uh... And I can't remember too many uh, beforehand. Um, again, I did uh, Bananas, Gorilla, and Richard Scary, and I did uh, I did do a voice in Marvel, uh, but uh, in the Marvel series, I I auditioned for Wolverine, and I didn't get it. And every time I went in after that, they said I sounded too much like Wolverine. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I think I played Cannonball. Oh, again, like I, um, you kind of go in and do like uh, what they say. Unless you're the lead dog, the view never changes. Uh, so I, I have yet to get the starring role in an animated series, uh, to which then I could kind of put full efforts into it. But uh, until then, you're kind of a, a, a contract grunt. <laughs> and I suppose that. Jeremy, lastly, before I let you go, uh, you mentioned there uh, in terms of I heard your uh, son say cool when the award came up in terms of Marty Combat. So in terms of a, a, an adventure or sort of family bonding when the movie does hit the cinema screens in 2021, will you be uh, taking up on that and uh, sitting down the sit room with your popcorn, uh, with your son and, and watching what the next door of the 21st century will be of... Uh, Marty Combat and say, listen, in terms of a bit of alumni and folklore, somehow my name is associated with that. We'll be going to see it if we're allowed to. I, as we're doing this, we're, we're now, I, I just saw today that they're saying in the next 12 weeks, we could hit an even higher peak in COVID. Uh, and I'm coming to you from California. I'm coming to you from the, the United States where it is, insane it's uh it's out of control and no one um seems to want to do anything to help themselves to stop it uh so hopefully we'll be able to see it in theaters if not we're gonna have to watch it at home on a pay-per-view because um we might not be able to go outside sadly uh, 
And I suppose uh, we'll, we'll hope that uh, we'll see sunnier days, uh, Jeremy, in terms of that options uh, going forward. Uh, Jeremy Rochford, a pleasure talking to you uh, this evening, uh, reliving your memories of uh, playing Smoke in the animated series uh, Mortal Kombat uh, Defenders of Earthrealm. Uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts and especially around the audition uh, process, a real eventful sort of story for you in terms of getting uh, playing the character of Smoke uh, in Mortal Kombat Defenders of Earthrealm. Uh, stay safe and st take care, Jeremy. Thank you, Jim. Um, and if you want to see something fun, uh, watch Small Town Crime on Netflix. We will do. We'll pass on the word, uh, Jeremy. I have a lot of fun in that one. I play a demented hitman. So I, uh, I'm, I'm brushing up my, uh, my skills to play the villains. <laughs> uh, best of luck. Thank you, sir.